Molly Caruso and I'm Gracie White and our project is Housewife vs. Hooker Chemical, Lois Gibbs' triumph over the Love Canal tragedy. Breathing is dangerous to your health. Help fight against pollution. Support the CHEJ, the Center for Health, Environment and Justice. Make the world a greener place. Excuse me, do you have a minute? I was wondering if I could give you some information about my organization the CHEJ. In this pamphlet you'll find information about us and our executive director, Lois Gibbs. What? You don't know who Lois Gibbs is? Why, she's my inspiration. You see, in the 1970s, Lois Gibbs discovered Hooker Chemical had dumped 21,000 tons of toxic waste into the Love Canal because U.S. citizens are tragically unaware of the chemical's harmful effects. Gibbs raised awareness and the U.S. citizens rebelled, creating programs such as Superfund and the CHEJ, where I currently work, to ensure stricter environmental regulations. I hope she can inspire you to clean up our earth as much as she inspired me. Thank you for your time. Excuse me, do you have a minute? I just need a few more signatures, then I can finally take this case to Congress. I can't believe it. Our little town, placed on top of a chemical landfill, it's a tragedy. It's 1978. Earth Day has been around for eight years. There have been laws passed regulating the dumping of chemicals. Does this not mean anything to anyone? Hi, what can I do for you? Hi, my name is Lois Gibbs. I was wondering if you're interested in signing a petition of great importance. I'd be glad to consider it. What's the petition about? Well, this might come as a bit of a shock, but... Our neighborhood is tragically built on top of a chemical landfill, so I'm trying to close down the 99th Street School. What? How did this happen? Well, it all started back in the late 1800s, when William T. Love decided to build a canal that would run from LaSalle to Lewiston. It was a way to increase shipping and would create new electricity from the Niagara Falls. I've never heard of a canal near here. What happened to it? Well, the Great Depression hit, and Love was forced to abandon his plan after only building a small portion of the canal. How do toxic chemicals fit into this? Good question. In 1942, Hooker Chemical Company bought the canal and started filling it with chemicals. By 1953, they'd completely filled the canal with some of the most toxic chemicals known to mankind. And then do you know what they did? They sold the Love Canal to the Niagara Falls Board of Education for one dollar without giving sufficient warning of the chemicals buried there. But that isn't right. We shouldn't have to live on top of a toxic waste dump. Of course I'll sign your petition. Thanks so much for your help. It's people like her that make me feel like I can triumph over Hoger Chemical Company. I just wish I could have taken action sooner. When my son was hospitalized with pneumonia, which was caused by the chemicals, I realized no one was going to stand up to Hooker except for me. I just hope it's not too late and this tragedy does not turn into a massacre. Hello? Hi, my name is Lois Gibbs. I was wondering if you're interested in signing a petition of great importance. Maybe. What's it for? Well, this might come as a bit of a shock, but our neighborhood is tragically built on top of a chemical landfill, so I'm trying to close down the 99th Street School. What? I don't think so. It's true. In 1978, the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, stated that even though some of these landfills have been closed down, they may still stand like taking time bombs. This time bomb has exploded. Think about your children. My children? I don't have children, so this doesn't mean anything to me. Listen, lady, I bet you just made this whole landfill thing up. That's not true. I have been suspicious of the chemicals for a while because my son never used to get sick. Now he has asthma and a blood disease. I called the government to come out and inspect the area, but they wouldn't believe me. Oh, I've heard about you. You don't have a job. You don't even have a college education. If the government doesn't believe you, then neither do I. Darn. I was sure I'd have enough signatures by the end of today. Wait, even though he didn't sign? I have enough. I can finally take this case to Congress. It feels good to be home. I am very upset with Miss Gibbs. 
She's lying to the nation by telling the press that it was my company's fault for this whole Love Canal tragedy. It's not. We warned the government of the chemicals buried there. She's making my company look dishonest. Shame on her. She is the dishonest one. Hello, Miss Gibbs. Are, are you ready for this hearing? Yes, I suppose so. But I still feel that you and the rest of Hooker Chemical Company deceived the people of the Love Canal by telling us that there was no danger when we first moved here. It was not our fault that the government chose to build a school on top of a landfill. We broke no laws. They were going to seize the land from us if we didn't sell it. We even gave warning of the chemicals buried there. And I quote, from the Love Canal deed which we gave to the government. The premises have been filled, in whole or in part, to the present grade level thereof with waste products. You see, it is the Board of Education's fault for not warning the residents that they were living on top of a landfill. But you didn't say whether the chemicals were dangerous. Because citizens were tragically unaware of the chemicals' harmful effects, we've all suffered from a rapidly growing cancer rate, birth defects, and disease. We didn't know that the chemicals could be extremely toxic, at the time, no one did. That is not true. The EPA did extensive testing on the Love Canal and the residents living there. One of the chemicals found was dioxin, the deadliest chemical on Earth. One pound can kill 10 million people. I cannot deny that dioxin is highly dangerous. But only when consumed, when it is airborne, it is perfectly safe. If it is perfectly safe, then how can you... Um explain the abnormalities of the citizens' health. How can you discredit the EPA's findings? Because I have proof that they were wrong. A well-respected doctor, Dr. Pagan, tested the land and found that there were only eight chemicals in the air, while there were 200 chemicals in the canal. This data does not match the data that the EPA put out. And while doctors and scientists argue people are dying, it's time to act, we can't wait. Who wants to live in a toxic waste dump? Not us, that's for sure. The state doesn't care about our little town. The state cares, all right. You're making such a big fuss about the chemicals that you're probably going to win this hearing and be relocated. Yes, hopefully. I don't believe you realize how important this case is to me and the residents of my neighborhood. If we are triumphant in winning this case, we will all be moved to safety. And citizens of America will see that even if you are just a housewife, you can still affect change. I have a hard time believing that an isolated case in New York will get nationwide attention. But we'll see. Looks like it's time to hear the Congress's decision. Good luck. Thanks, you too. And the Congress's verdict is this. All residents of the Love Canal will be relocated immediately. Hooker Chemical Company will be charged $52 million, which will cover the cost for the cleanup of the Love Canal and for the pain and suffering of the residents. Create a clean, safe, and healthy community. Support the CHEJ. Excuse me, are you interested in learning more about my organization? Well, we are founded by a woman named Lois Gibbs because of the tragic Love Canal pollution crisis. Miss Gibbs fought for awareness of toxic chemicals. Because she was so passionate about what she believed in, she took her case all the way to Congress, and the government finally listened to her. Does her work still affect us today? Why, of course it does. So many triumphant things came out of her work against Hooker Chemical. For one, the government created a plan called Superfund, which uses taxpayers' money to clean up landfills. The government also passed several new laws regulating chemical dumping all over the nation. Miss Gibbs helped publicize the pollution crisis and made people work harder at keeping our earth clean. Because of her, the U.S. is now prepared in case a tragedy like the Love Canal ever occurs again. That's a triumph. Thanks for giving me a few minutes of your time. Say no to pollution. Support the CHEJ.